Supply chain issues are a fundamental challenge for us. Uh, we're depending on new aircraft coming in. It's taking longer than we expected. There are issues with equipment and parts, and that's changing the cycle of engine times. And there are a cascade of things which are as a result of aircraft not flying for a long period of time and supply chains being shut down effectively. So it's a big deal for us. Um, we're all just working together as best we can because together we'll get through this and recreate the delicate balance that we enjoyed pre-pandemic in the way our supply chain worked across the industry. Well, look, for us in Australia, it's winter coming up, uh, but we have four big peak periods during the year because our school holiday periods um, happen quarterly in effect. And so June and July is another big period coming and we're gearing up for that. But the reality is that we still have an imbalance of supply and demand with labor in Australia, which means that all the key components of our ecosystem in Australia, from the airports to the air traffic controllers to the catering companies, everybody's going through the same thing, which is higher levels of attrition than they've ever experienced before. Lots of new people who don't really understand the ropes. And so everything in our system basically requires us to stay flexible, adjust, adapt, and make sure that we're taking into account these little nuances, which are quite a big deal when you're gearing into a peak. We're very confident we've now got the system working in a way that enables us to push really hard and operate with a lot of hours on every aircraft without causing issues with respect to cancellations or delays. Well, look, in Australia, we have no industry yet for sustainable aviation fuel. So the most important thing for us is getting governments working together with the industry to try to get the ball moving so that we can get the first established uh, production in, in our country. Because absent that, it's a very difficult thing because, of course, trying to ship SAF into Australia would be a devastating, difficult uh, task and, and counterproductive to the ultimate goal, which is more sustainable fuel. The industry is not going to be successful if there aren't incentives and legislation that creates a framework for that innovation to take place and have um, a successful result on the other end of it. Government's got to be involved and we're starting to see the first moves from government to embrace the process and really enjoy the benefits associated with innovating. Well, look, it's mostly been okay, but of course, you know, it's very difficult. It's adding a lot of complexity as we move through these ups and downs and in, in renormalizing as an industry, just adds complexity because we're having to make sure that we can hang on to our slots, but also manage the ups and downs associated with absenteeism and higher attrition levels and weather patterns and all sorts of things, which are making it a little bit more difficult to get back to normal. So it's working okay. Um, you know, we would hope for continued flexibility for a little while because it, we're just not back in a normalized period yet, but the slot programs are behaving as if we are. Well, it is a, it's a very, very, very big labor for us, right, because China inbound tourism is an important part of Australian travel and also broadly across Asia. Japan's just starting to venture out and do international travel. And so we're really excited to see all of Asia, particularly Northern Asia, starting to step up and get back out into the world.